Hello there, thanks so much for tuning in. So I'm Tim, off screen except for my hands, and welcome to Digital Armour. So we have got uh, another flick through an old school magazine, uh, CCG magazine today. This is Inquest, just the gaming magazine, issue 37, and this was from May 1998. So... Yeah, very, very old. So at the top, we've got a stronghold, price guide, and spoiler list. It'll be very fun to see what kind of prices these cards went for. We've got a Star Wars deck, uh, apparently the world's number one killer deck to look through. And judging by the cover with all these gremlins, it might possibly have something to do with unglued uh, in the magazine. Who knows? I haven't actually had a flick through this yet. Don't know whether to... Ruin the spine or not. Let's try not to. Right, let's get this centralised. So we start off with the contents. Babylon 5 component game system. Never particularly interested in Babylon 5. Editor's letters. So this magazine was always quite a jokey one, it felt. Uh, it never really took itself quite as seriously as the other ones, which were Duelist and Scry. So reader's letters. Kitty letter. So we get cute cats even back in 1998. We've got an advert for Legend of the Burning Sands, which was uh, something from Legend of the Five Rings. So I played Legend of the Five Rings for a while, didn't really get into Burning Sands. Back then, 98, I would have been, who knows, maybe 14, maybe 15. Not an awful lot of, lot of money in my back pocket. Uh, we get an advert here for uh, Jabba's Palace for the Star Wars CCG, and that was my main main CCG back then in the day. So these uh, are not saved from. Um, I haven't kept these all this time. This is eBay purchases, like quite a lot of the channel is turning into with old and dead CCGs and things like that. Covering other games here, so yeah, there's some figures stuff like that. Toy Fair, it said. We get a big advert for Rage which I believe was a card game. Yeah, a trading card game. Advert for 3D Star Trek chess. <laughs> Fair enough. Wow. Uh, Magic Player of the Month was John Finkel. 19 at the time, from Fanwood, New Jersey. DCI Standard Rating, 41st in the world. Fair enough. John Finkel is still a name, I believe, at the moment. Or maybe I'm thinking of another Finkel. This is quite interesting up here, this pie chart. CCGs dissected. So games that fans want to see as CCGs. Number one, it turns out, was Final Fantasy with 32%. There has been a Final Fantasy TCG. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. There were quite a few sets released for it in quite quick succession. So I'm trawling uh, Magic Madhouse, etc. to see if I can pick up the sets or the opuses, as they were called, that I wanted to. Advanced D&D, well, that was basically magic anyway. Warcraft, that eventually got one with World of Warcraft. Uh, Wheel of Time books, not heard of them. Star South Park, that would have been fun. Simpsons and other. Okay, so quite a fair few of those actually came true then. <laughs> Prophetic. Uh, best sellers, so top CCGs. Number one, Magic. Number two, Star Wars. Number three, Legend of the Five Rings. Number four, Babylon 5. Five with Star Trek. Six, Battletech. Shadowrun, Dune, Middle-Earth and Rage. Fair enough. So I played Magic, I played Star Wars, I played Legend of the Five Rings, Star Trek TNG, never played, but going to get into it. Battletech, I played uh, a little bit with the actual robot uh, models, however, never played the CCG. And June was my number one regret of not getting into at the time. Although even if I did, I probably wouldn't have kept my cards, so never mind. Uh, all kinds of news bits here. So I realised I'm waffling and we're already four minutes into the video. Uh, so some new stuff, latest releases. So Babylon 5 CCG, Stronghold, uh, Spikes. I remember Spikes. Stronghold was quite a cool set. Some RPG stuff there as well. Don't recognise that, C23. Jewel of the Planeswalkers. So that is what Magic used to look like on PC back in the day. So yeah, even MTGO. Is, is an actual step up from that, to be fair. New quest cards bring magic back to life. Okay, so what are they saying is a quest card? Oh, that was quite interesting. A quest, okay, represent missions. Is anyone else aware of these quest cards? Were they released in packs? 
or were they just in this magazine? I don't honestly know. Let me know. That is something that I've not seen or heard of before. Big fifth edition advert. Even more secret quest stuff. Reading the article will probably tell me about that, but as we're just doing a flick through, I'm not going to stop here and read it. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, tentative release date, 4th of the 1st, 99. Is this something that was potentially meant to be being released and then they just backtracked and cancelled it? Because that would have been really cool having quests. That looks like Legend of the Five Rings. Yep, Lion Clan deck. So there were different clans. There was Unicorn Clan. I think I was Unicorn Clan. I can't remember. And Star Wars decks as well. So we've got World Champion, Dark Side deck and Light Side deck. That looks packed with characters. Yeah, Captain Han Solo, Chewbacca, regular Han Solo, Leia, Luke, Obi-Wan, Wedge. Yeah, that's basically just... It was really annoying because the main characters were so hard to get for that TCG. Battletech, and we've got a deck list up there. It contains 10 of something, uh, like 6 of 1. So a lot of the other CCGs didn't have the same restrictions that Magic did have as 4 of. I know Legend of the Five Rings actually had a 3 of rule, but quite a lot of them, like the Star Trek, Star Wars, Battletech, then apparently didn't have any restriction on numbers of cards. And then Middle Earth. Uh, so this was Middle-earth based on Tolkien, but before the actual Lord of the Rings CCG came out. Stargazing, so this is all about uh, sci-fi RPG Alternity. I've heard of it, I think, but never really played it. I think you could kind of like mash together all kinds of different sci-fi into one. I don't honestly know. All kinds of stuff to go with that. Celestia Command Level, no idea what's going on there either. Uh, right, killer decks. So we've got a core deck here with some mogs and then some lances on core, nomad on core. Uh, another theme deck over here. Another killer deck for something else. Spellfire it looks like. Never played that. Okay, so this looks completely random. That's an X-Files card. We've got some horror cards there. That's Middle Earth, Star Wars, Star Trek. Legend of the Five Rings, so they're obviously just having some fun here. But yeah, just like with the Duelist, they put in challenges for you to try and beat your opponent with what to do there. And all kinds of other questions. And the doorbell's just gone, so I'll be right back. Hello. Lovely. Thanks so much. Cheers. So this looks like an actual Q&A about Magic the Gathering. Like, if I play this card, what does it do, etc. Other rules in here. Lots and lots of writing. There was so much uh, packed into each of these magazines. I think it was monthly. So even more stuff. Basic training about other games. Contests. That's cool. So you could win cards or something or other. Top 10 stronghold cards. So in at number one, Shard Phoenix. Yeah, no, probably hasn't done that well uh, under the test of time. Pursuit of Knowledge, Reigns of Power, Ensnaring Bridge at number four. I think that's the first one that I've really... Yeah, okay, Grave Pact, Ruination, Land Destruction, Hidden Retreat, Volrath Stronghold, and Constant Miss. Out of all ten of those, the most powerful cards from Magic's latest set, I think only Ensnaring Bridge is worthy of a place in there these days. Could be wrong. Honourable mention, Sliver Queen. <laughs> okay. And then they ranked white as first, then blue, then green, then red, and then black. Okay. What is this? Freak Fest. Goodness knows. That's way too bright and very strange there. Keep going. Dazed and confused. Look at the life in what C's rules committee must be like. Okay, so this is again just a sort of fun article, poking fun at some of the errata and stuff to do with magic cards. This just looks like toys in general, geek paraphernalia. So we've got a cute cuddly Cthulhu. We've got some kind of fantasy based clock. We've got some models, all sorts. We've got t-shirts with actual magic cards printed on them. That's hilarious. Dune CCG advert. We've got a lighter with the vampire um, franchise on it because yeah, everyone wants to wants to have their favourite brands printed on their lighters. Another contest. So there's two contests in here. Oh, something to do with the Illuminati. That was a card game back in the day that I haven't seen talked about for quite a while. Illuminati CCG. Might have to look into this. And then I know that time is running on, so thank you very much for bearing with. So we get price guides. So this is what you would use to do your trading rather than checking things on the internet with CCG 
uh, TCG player, that kind of thing. So if we look at Black Lotus back here in 1998, 380 pounds. Bayou was $42. Sorry, yeah, this is of course in dollars. Other random cards, so Icy Manipulator, $48. Savannah was 40. Scrubland was 40. Plateau was 45. Fair enough. Uh, Raging River, a card that I've never heard of, was $42. Never Annual's Disc, uh, Larry Nevin, uh, $35. So that's being printed as a bulk rare in Commander Precons, I believe. So that was quite interesting. But yeah, they had all of the separate sets like Mirage Alliances, and you could flick here to have a look. Weather Light and Tempest. They did promo cards as well. So promo, Giant's Badger would have set you back five pounds back in the day. And then they had other CCGs as well. So this is quite interesting. And I've got quite a few Star Trek cards sitting on my desk. And yeah, what they what they used to be worth. So Deanna Troy I've got, and she was worth $14 back in the day. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, Star Wars cards, all sorts. So this was super, super useful. And then there was the actual card directory. So if you wanted to know what a card was, then you could come here and see that like this card cost this much, it was this and it, it had this effect on it. That was really useful in the days before Scryfall and being able to just digitally look up card encyclopedias. You had to refer to this when building your decks and things like that, or, or your friend's knowledge. So massive section all about cards and what they do. Adverts for local LGSs, L stands for local, you know what I mean. And then a little article at the back to keep you going. Another advert for Battletech, the Arsenal expansion. And that was Inquest magazine. So thanks very much for bearing with. Hope that you got something from it. If you did, feel free to drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you're playing and reading Inquest back then, or if this is all new to you and you had an idea that people could look at magazines back in the day all about CCGs. I wish we had the plethora of CCGs today than we did in yesteryear. I'd be so poor, but it would be so much fun. And I really wish that we still had a magazine like this to fill us in about all these details. The internet's great, but sometimes having a magazine is just, yeah, there's something about it. Anyway, cheers for watching. Don't forget to do all the usual YouTube stuff, smashing of buttons like the subscribe one, hammering that notification bell, or just tapping them if you're feeling a bit more polite. And I will catch you all on the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.